May June 2023, Paper 5, Variant 2. Question 1. This question is to prepare benzoic acid from the alkaline hydrolysis of the methyl benzoic and the salt, sodium benzoate will form first. After that, it will acidify by hexia. So these two reactions uh, equations uh, is uh, what uh, happened during the reaction. First, the ester will react with the sodium hydroxide. After that, the salt will form. And the salt will acidify by the HCl from the benzoic acid. So benzoic acid is a solid. Uh, it's partially or uh, poorly dissolved in water. Right? So that's why when uh, there is an acidification or the salt being acidified, you see the white precipitate. Okay, so these uh, are the steps that used to form the benzoic acid. Um, I try to use the diagram to explain. Okay, so first we add uh, the ester 1.242 gram in the round bottom flask. After that, uh, we add the uh, sodium hydroxide. Uh, this one need to prepare. Okay, so uh, after we prepare one more per dm cube sodium hydroxide, so we put 10 cm cube in there. So this one is in excess. Okay, then the ND bumping chip or granules need to put in. Uh, it's because uh, during the reaction or the heating, uh, so we want to prevent the mixture to boil uh, too much. Okay, so it's uh, to prevent it boil over into the condenser because later we're going to use the condenser for the reflux. So it means uh, to prevent the, the excessive boiling or the explosive boiling later. Okay, so after that, uh, we try to feed the condenser to the round bottom flask. And after that, we heat uh, or uh, let it reflux for 20 minutes. So this is the uh, hydrolysis, which take time. Okay, after the hydrolysis, so the reaction mixture need to be cold. And after that, we pour the reaction mixture to a pickle. After we pour to the pickle, then we add the hexia uh, to acidify the uh, mixture. After it's being acidified, uh, then we will see the benzoic acid form. Uh, so it will be a white uh, precipitate. Then we filter the mixture. So the uh, white precipitate or the benzoic acid will be obtained. Then it will undergo recrystallization, filter again, dry and record the mass. Uh, recrystallization is uh, something like that. Okay, just roughly uh, brief you what is that. Okay, so we have a solid from the filtration just now. If we want to do recrystallization, means to purify the solid, we will add the hot solvent. Uh, in this case, it's water. Okay, so after that, to dissolve the, the solid and it's form a clear solution, uh, then we allow this solution to cool. Uh, while cooling, then the solid will form, means the precipitate will reform. Uh, this is the crystal, so means the this is the recrystallization process. Okay, once the uh, solids form, uh, we filter again, wash, and we dry uh, and get the mass of the uh, the precipitate. Right. Um, okay. So this is how we get the benzoic acid from this uh, recrystallization filter dry. Okay, up that we can get the mass. Okay, so uh, this, these are all the steps that are uh, involved. Okay, now let's move on to part A1. Calculate the volume of uh, methyl benzoic um, used uh, in the step one. Okay, give your answer to the nearest 0 0.05 cm cube. Okay, this one, uh, you should know a density is the mass over volume. 
okay, in order to get the volume so is the mass over the density so you should get uh, 1.11 cm cube so the volume of mid, uh, benzo eight is uh, 1.15 cm cube okay part two identify a suitable piece of apparatus to measure the volume of the methyl benzoate required in step one okay so uh, we better use a burette uh, because the burette uh, uncertainty is to plus minus 0 0.05 cm cube okay, so because uh, this one the step one okay so one Okay, 1.242 gram of the liquid, so means uh, we have to take uh, about uh, 1.15 cm cube. Uh, so it's, bad, it's better for us to use the burette. Okay, so because of this, huh? All right. Okay, part three, calculate the mass of the sodium hydroxide that needed uh, to prepare the solution. Um, so because it needs the 100 cm cube, of one mole per dm cube sodium hydroxide, so we calculate the moles that needed first. Okay, so it's zero point zero. Uh, so it's zero point one uh, zero. Okay, after that uh, we use this mole times the molar mass. We will get the mass. So mass of the sodium hydroxide needed is four gram. Okay, so this one uh, we will come back to this one uh, to discuss the, some of the steps. Okay, part B, student one added the mass of uh, sodium hydroxide, okay, um, the four gram sodium hydroxide into the pico. Describe the step of the student should take to make a 100 cm cube of well, one mole per dm cube sodium hydroxide. Okay, so this is to prepare a solution from the solid. Okay, so first we add the sodium hydroxide in the pico. Then uh, we just need to add a small amount of water which just able to dissolve the solid okay after the uh, sodium hydroxide dissolves then we need to pour the solution into the volumetric flask uh, so in this case we're going to use 100 cm cube volumetric class okay after that we need to wash the pickle and pour the uh, washing to the same flask okay after that we have to top up the the uh, solution means the uh, top up uh, to the calibration mark using the distilled water okay so top up this uh, this flask to the calibration mark here uh, then uh, we try to shake that to homogenize the solution uh, this is what we do uh, okay for the preparation okay so first add four gram into the pickle Okay, after that, add small volume of distilled water to dissolve the solid. Okay, this is the second step. Okay, pour the solution and the washing uh, into the 100 cm cube of the volumetric flask. Top up okay, the flask to the calibration mark using distilled water. Uh, so you must mention the volume of the flask and using distilled water not just water you must mention distilled water okay once uh, uh, done so we can uh, put the stopper invert and shake the flask to homogenize the solution okay this is a way to prepare a solution from a solid okay part c student 2 prepared 0 0.1 mole per dm cube sodium hydroxide instead of one mole per dm cube just now state how this would affect the final mass of benzoic acid explain using calculation this one is quite easy we need to compare the mole right so first what is the effects effects on the mass of the benzoic acid so the it will decrease the mass of benzoic acid will decrease Okay, so why we need to uh, prove that or show that using calculation the mole of the ester used is uh, 1.242 over the molar mass so we get 0 0.00913 now the mole of sodium hydroxide is 
0.001 mole so which is uh, much lesser than the ester so now the sodium hydroxide is no longer in excess it is the limiting agent that's why it will form lesser mass of benzoic acid okay part d1 explain why it is necessary to reflux the mixture in step 5 okay so it's very easy uh, let's uh, go back to the reflux setup ah this one so when we try to heat the mixture because uh, in this mixture we have sodium hydroxide uh, and the ester so if let's say it's not under reflux so the reaction mixture might vaporize and it might just uh, disappear so why we want to do reflux because we want to put the condenser okay in uh, or on the this uh, round bottom flux okay when the reaction mixture goes up right okay out uh, during the boiling all the gas vapor will goes up after that if you cool by the condenser and it's form the droplets and droplet so this is why we want to use a condenser because it will prevent the loss of the chemicals and we can do it for longer time we can do it for half an hour one hour yeah, so without any loss of the chemicals or the compounds <clears throat> so that's why uh, the, the answer is what allow heating to increase the rate of reaction yeah this one we need it and the most important is what without loss of substance so during reflux because uh, the uh, reaction mixture okay if you condense back and drop back to the flux so it won't really uh, have any loss okay that's the purpose okay part two explain why a naked flame is not used in step five uh, because we are heating an organic uh, mixture so normally we don't really uh, direct heat uh, so we uh, because the substance they are flammable organic solid okay part three explain the purpose of transferring the liquid in step six uh, this is uh, the one that you need to uh, understand okay this is the step six this one so after the reflux we after the cooling then we need to pour this uh, liquid or the reaction reaction mixture to the pickle so because we want to separate this mixture with the uh, the anti pumping granules here right so uh, this is a part this is why we need to pour carefully okay so to remove the anti-bumping granules from the reaction mixture that's a purpose huh? okay, part e1 explain what the students should do to confirm that the mixture has been acidified in step 7 uh, acidified is the the salts that form added with the HCl we discussed just now so after it's being acidified so we know that uh, the H the H plus or the HCl will be in excess so when the acid in excess then it will uh, it's able to change the color of indicators so it's better for us to put uh, one indicate means uh, uh, one of the indicator so in this part uh, I just choose methyl orange you can choose others so uh, add a few drops of methyl orange to the mixture and the solution will turn red when HCl in excess so this is a color change when we see the red color means the solution or the mixture uh, is uh, turns to red we know that the uh, the salt has been acidified and now the HCl is in excess right so we just need to use uh, one uh, indicator it's your choice part two describe what you would expect to observe as the sodium benzoate mix mixture is acidified in step seven 
because after acidity uh, uh, fight, so it will uh, form precipitate, means it will form benzoic acid. Okay, again, after the sodium benzoic, the, uh, the salt being acidified, it will form benzoic acid, which is the white precipitate or which is a precipitate. Okay, because benzoic acid is poorly soluble in water. Okay, part F suggests why it is necessary to cool the mixture before filter in step 9. Okay, the last step, uh, which is the recrystallization. Uh, because uh, we need to make sure the benzoic acid, uh, all, uh, all of them or most of them has been precipitated out. Okay, the reason is uh, benzoic acid is less soluble in cold water. That's why we might want to make sure it's cold first before filtration. Okay, part G. Pure benzoic acid has a melting point of uh, 1 to 2 degrees C. The product made by student 1 has a melting point of 119. Okay, this student suggests the melting point of product was lower than expected because of water. Some water still inside the solid. Explain what the student should do to ensure the product no longer contains water. Very easy. Uh, we just try to dry the precipitate and we wait until constant mass. Okay, that's the standard procedure. Okay, part H1. Calculate the maximum mass of benzoic acid that can be formed from 1.242 gram of the methyl benzoate. Okay, this one is, uh, uh, we need to know the mole ratio. The mole ratio between the, um, the ester okay, and the salt is a one to one ratio. The salt and the benzoic acid also one to one ratio. That's why we can uh, just calculate using the, the mole. Okay, we calculate the moles of the the ester, so 1.242 gram over the molar mass, okay, times the molar mass of the benzoic acid, okay, because they are all one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, so after that, we'll get 1.11 gram. This is a theoretical mass that uh, the <clears throat> student should get, right? So 1.11 gram maximum. Okay, part two. Student 3 produced 0.825 gram of benzoic acid from 1.242 gram of the methyl benzoic. Okay, calculate the percentage yield of the benzoic acid produced by student 3. Uh, this one, uh, percentage yield, you should know is the actual yield or actual mass over the theoretical mass times 100%. So, Therefore, it's 0.825 over 1.11 times 100%, you'll get 74%. Okay, that's all for this part. I hope you understand. Thank you.